Hello everyone, I'm the Enforcer and welcome to the Breaking News. Today's Breaking News is a Ukrainian drone attack on the city of Azov, just west of the city of Rostov-on-Don, has knocked out the last Russian port that was able in the southwestern region of the Russian Federation to accept any kind of oil imports or exports. This news just came out just a brief moment ago as we saw footage coming out of the pipeline being struck by Ukrainian drone forces and knocking out this port completely. We see here the footage looking into the night at Azov and the explosion right there that just knocked out the pipeline. This pipeline is one that feeds the oil silos in the port of Azov to the oil port that is directly outside. The oil silo is seen right here. It's an incredibly small one, but moving right out here to this port facility where we can see a large amount of ships are currently in holding either to receive some sort of fuel or to wait to try and get clearance further down or up the Don River. This port is quite serious, and while the oil facilities here do not seem to be that large, this was actually one of the few remaining oil facilities that was left inside of the entire southwestern region of the Russian Federation. There are no oil facilities within the city of Sevastopol, and even more so, there are no oil processing facilities within the port of Novorossiysk either. If there is, they are most likely revolved or completely related to the provision of fuels for naval ships either leaving Sevastopol or ships entering and exiting the port of Novorossiysk and are not focused on the actual loading of fuels and their shipment into other regions. This means that not only are Russian ships once again being greatly impaired on their ability to refuel, but they're also being greatly impaired on their ability to fuel the Russian armed forces that are inside of Crimea and also inside of the western Ukrainian area, such as the uh, Kherson Oblast. Once again, these forces will be under a direct threat that this oil will no longer, will really refine gases, will be able to make it to them and they will once again be in a very tough bind for fuel. This means that fuel rationing will most likely become commonplace within the armed forces of the Russian Federation, at least within the western areas of Ukraine. And this also means that this is going to be greatly decreasing their combat effectiveness and also the amount of forces that they are able to have on the field at a, at a single moment or at any given time. This is a major deal for Ukraine because making sure that the Russians are deprived of any ability to produce fuel or any uh, ability to receive any re uh, refined fuels is a big deal and is certainly helping them out in gaining an upper hand in the war effort. Moving on from that news, we have also been able to hear that within the city of Orsk, a major dam rupture has led to the city pretty much being submerged underwater due to the massive influx of, of course, flood water coming into the city after the flooding of the Orsk Dam. You can see here in this video picture that the entire city on every single street is filled with water. We have also gotten videos, which we're not going to be showing on stream, showing that the water has gotten up almost to the rooftop levels in some parts of the city that we're looking at right here, showing that the flood waters are still rapidly clean climbing in, in the amount and volume, and once again showing that the entire city of Orosk is now in an, a massive emergency crisis. We can see here the, uh, them showing the continued floodwaters that have filled almost a third or half of the city of Orosk. We can see a part of Orosk that has not been flooded over here uh, in this video clip, but we can still see the floodplain stop just short of most of the city. This is a major event, as the city of Orsk, while not being one of the largest inside the Russian Federation, once again is a major city, at least within the region, and continues to feed vital amounts of resources, and not only that, war materials, to the Russian Federation. One of the most interesting things about the city of Orsk is that there is a fairly large metallurgical plant right next door within the city of Novotroitsk. We have not been able to hear if this city has been affected by the flooding and rupture of the dam, but nevertheless, this is a very serious incident, and hopefully we'll see that the Russian war industry is greatly affected as a result of the dam's rupture and collapse. Moving on from that and out of the city of Orsk, we have also been able to hear that back in the area of the Belgrade region, heavy shelling is still occurring as the Free Russian Army is continuing to bombard Russian forces whenever the opportunity arises. We can see one of these larger barrages still hitting the city of Belgrade as of this morning. Once again, it appears that they're using 122mm Grad MLRSs and trying to target a blanket area of the city, hopefully hitting Russian forces somehow or some way. With that, that's the end of that clip as it repeats again, but once again showing us the heavy barrages. We also have more videos and more clips of the barrages that were occurring on Belgrade just this morning. 
We can see in this clip here from a security camera, more MLRS grad batteries landing in the middle of the city of Belgorod. In the next clip, we can also see a fire that has broken out as a result of the MLRS barrages. We can also see the continued rising of smoke from the damage caused by MLRS barrages throughout Belgrade and the sound of air sirens going off. And in our final clip, we can see some of the damage that was caused by some of the MLRS strikes. Overall, it seems as though the free Russian army's rocket branches of the city of Belgorod are largely ineffective at targeting and hitting Russian forces, as we rarely ever get a lot of confirmation showing that these rocket barrages are serious in result towards the Russian armed forces. It just generally is blanket barrages of the town continuously. Let me know in the comments if you believe that this is an effective strategy by the free Russian army to uh, largely blanket the city of Belgorod, civilians and the military included, uh, to try and hit Russian forces throughout the city. Meanwhile, the Free Russian Army still isn't making any advances out of their current front lines. It appears that they are currently being contained in the area, or they've decided to not advance any farther into the Belgorod Oblast. Moving on from that news and into Ukraine itself, we've also heard that Zelensky wanted French troops in Ukraine. This was a very interesting statement, and according to the direct statement that Nexit was able to get from Zelensky, Zelensky said, I supported Macron's proposal that the French military should come here to train our people. This is not talking about the latter, the later statements or the later made statements about Macron wanting to send the French armed forces into Ukraine for an armed intervention, but more so just talking about the arrival of French special forces to try and train Ukrainian forces in how the French army fights, so that way the Ukrainians can take that to the battlefield and use it for themselves. It appears that Zelensky was actually a big proponent and a big fan of that idea, and we can hear that now today. Meanwhile, inside the Middle East, we are starting to hear that once again, Iranian commanders are beginning to move to underground bunkers in the preparation for upcoming attacks. We were able to see that an Iranian government jet flew from the city of Tehran to the city of Isfahan, most likely where a large underground bunker has been made for these commanders to operate their strikes and other kinds of activities out of. Not only that, but we've also gotten news from the area of western Iran that the attack will most likely happen from this region within western Iran and will most likely happen before the end of Ramadan on April 9th. It is expected that the attack is actually going to be an official state-sanctioned attack by the Islamic Republic of Iran, and they're going to be using Shahed one-way attack drones, much like we see in Ukraine, and also inter uh, intermediate-range ballistic missiles, which we have talked about here on this channel before, and are, of course, long enough range that they can reach Israel and farther beyond. It does seem as though it is a very concerning situation within Iran, but it's not working off of our original timetable that we were told where the attack was going to be happening in less than 24 hours. It has now been 36 hours since the Iranians made that statement, and we still have not seen a drone or missile attack occurring from the Islamic Republic of Iran on Israel yet. We believe that it most likely will be happening before the end of Ramadan. An attack is inevitable at this point. It is just a matter of when. And it appears that the answer is before April 9th, at least at this moment. But with that, that is all of the major breaking news that we have today. I thank every single one of y'all so much once again for watching this news. And I got to give a huge shout out to our patrons on Patreon who are helping to make these video projects possible. And also... I thank you all, once again, whether you're Patreons or uh, patrons or not, for watching. If y'all did enjoy, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and support us on Patreon, link in the description below, uh, or just hit the like button. That really helps us out, or subscribe as well. That really makes us happy too. But with that, I will see y'all all in the next one.